Hey, and we are back for episode three. And for this episode, we're going to be talking about the Western Expanse, the Industrial Revolution, and the modern times. So, when we left off, we were talking about the colonization of America, as well as the Renaissance era, and how things were in a state of dark times for Halloween, and how... Halloween was almost wiped out, but as, as the Western Expanse came in and as Irish families came in, they kind of brought Halloween with them and Halloween came back to the United States as well as other parts where Irish people settled. So we started doing games again and we started having fun again. The Irish brought in a bobbing for apples, which is a, a tradition that goes even past the Irish back into the Roman era, which again goes back to Pomonia, which again we'll talk more about when it comes to witches and paganism, because that is a pagan game, which we now use uh, for fun. Kids use for fun, but it used to be a, a more of a, of a divination game to find women would, would play to find their future husband. So they brought that as well as other traditions we we have now, like. And as the Western Expanse kind of ended, we started going back to our Celtic and Druidic roots where the Druids would, as I mentioned in the first episode, would light a sacrificial bonfire to uh, celebrate the dead. They would dress up in animal skin and animal hides. We took that tradition and kind of ran with it by making mask, paper masks, and then we would dress up in old clothes like overhauls and whatnot, and kids would go around and ask for candy or do rather naughty things like egging houses or disassembling stuff and putting it and not in order or putting stuff onto people's houses and really just having chaotic stuff, which I, again, I kind of mentioned on, my fir on the first episode, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. Mainly what I want to cover is, like I said, the Irish came over as well as other cult, other uh, people came over and brought Halloween back with them and brought Halloween back into fruition. And as they brought it back into fruition, again, the church just kind of came in and drowned it out some of the old Celtic traditions and kind of made some new traditions such as get-togethers and parties to kind of keep kids... From being as rambunctious as they were, because kids are being very rambunctious, it was getting bad. I mean, there was people lighting other people's houses on fire, opening up barn doors, and letting cattle out. I mean, really doing really vicious things, because due to the uh, world wars at the time, and so, and so, and just other personal things doing to the the stock market crash in the 30s, just a lot of that bad times, so it just reflected in society with kids. So people got together and they found out ways to kind of do that, but I guess but via the get-togethers, via the parties, via parades and celebrations, and this started transitioning to where we have now, like in school, like we're in school now, you'll bring your costume with you and you get to talk about what you what you got what you're what you're supposed to be and you can share and bring that out and even the adults back in the 40s and 50s kind of were able to go out and have fun and that kind of went away you know by the end of the 50s and into the 60s now we, the kids of the baby boomers us x generation we're kind of bringing that back especially in the gay community the gay community really brought it back in a big way, with some of their parades in New York and L.A. and San Francisco and just all you know all those different kind of places, they brought that back, and we kind of took it. And now you have a, parties just for adults, or even adults go out, they go out and get dressed up with their kids and go trick or treating. So, and one of the also good things is. Ooh, you know, some we talked as I talked about earlier, some of the masks, but those the paper masks. But one thing about the paper masks that a lot of people found out is they were easily flammable. So 
people started finding more materials and thus that kind of brought up that again with the industrial revolution people found, you know thus finding more easy a better material to work that's less flammable it offered to open up opportunities for stores and factories to kind of make a lot of money and there's a lot of places like Noka, Minnesota or other places where they have stores. They're even a store I think in California that's open 24, well, 24 7, but they're open 365 days out of the year just for Halloween stuff. So Halloween and Halloween's a very big business and it's gross is about two billion a year. It's the second biggest hol holiday in the year. Next to Christmas. I get it. Since I'm almost out, my notes are almost out. I guess one last thing I want to kind of talk about is, and I will talk about this more individually, but this, the last kind of subject for this video for episode three, the kind of ending of the history for Halloween from on my end, because like I said, after this, ep in the next few episodes are going to be more individualized about movie monsters or monsters in specific that are specifically tied to Halloween as well as Halloween lore of characters like uh, Jack-o'-lantern and bats and cats and all that. And we, we'll kind of talk more about them in details in the next few episodes till you know Halloween but slasher movies I'm gonna talk about slasher movies because slasher movies kind of help also kind of help revolutionize Halloween as we know it because you know it wouldn't be Halloween without slasher movies without watching Jason or Michael Myers or Freddy Krueger or the Howling movies or some other movie like Poltergeist that has you know, horror movies getting a good scare has become part of Halloween and we love to scare ourselves I mean we love to get a good scare we, that's why we go to haunted houses that's why we do watch the scary movie. That's why we dress up as our favorite uh, serious, like uh, killers in these movies. We indulge in that, and it's fun. It's cathartic in some ways, because you face your fears, and you get the chills and the thrills and the ability to kind of realize, hey, even though these things are scary, I can surpass that. And that's kind of the best part of Halloween is just living in that moment and this is pretty much it for my, my version of the history of Halloween like it's been kind of a three-part series of like I said the rest of the seven parts we are going to be more talking about lore in regards to Halloween like I said Jack O'Lantern and Cats and Bats will be the next episode kind of lore and then after that I'm going to talk about movie monsters and then I'm going to talk about some of the more individual, you know, I'll be talking about some of the movie monsters after that and just kind of go with that and kind of have fun. But yeah, this is it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, like, comment, subscribe. I'm Mark Munich Niche. Guys, take care of yourselves. Have a good day. Sorry.